Hi everybody, Lawyer Autumn Whit Boyd here. I am recording today's video on Friday, May 8th, and I wanted to come talk to you about whether you should return your PPP loan money. So I actually got this question from a client of ours here at the AWB firm who received a PPP loan, the Paycheck Protection Plan loan, which is a forgivable loan if you spend it on payroll, uh, rent, utilities, and interest. If you spend it on those four things, it is forgiven and you do you follow all the other rules and you do things the right way. Uh, but you may have heard about a week or two ago, um, some new rules and regulations came down around very large companies that, you know, had public uh, financials and um, have plenty of money in the bank, have plenty of access to credit that had received a PPP loan. And there was a lot of backlash about that. So we've gotten new rules, new guidance after that happened. Uh, but I wanted to walk through kind of step by step how you might want to think about this. If you received a PPP loan and you're not sure, you're worried about it, should you keep it, should you return it? So here uh, I'll start by saying the guidance is not totally clear on this yet. So uh, again, I'm recording this Friday, May 8th. We may see more guidance in the coming days. The deadline to um, return the money was yesterday originally. It was May 7. That was extended through May 14. So that's the reason I'm recording this today. I wanted, um, since they did extend that deadline, uh, lots of people are thinking about it over the next week. So here's what we do know for sure, is if your loan was not necessary under the law, you could have criminal fines up to a million dollars and imprisonment for up to 30 years. So those are really scary penalties. I don't think anyone is excited about an enormous fine or going to prison. Um, here is the guidance that we have received to date. And this is not in the form of an actual regulation. It is an FAQ, a frequently asked question. So the first thing that they put out was a couple weeks ago. Um, and the question was, do businesses owned by large companies with adequate sources of liquidity to support the business's ongoing operations qualify for a PPP loan? And the answer doesn't say yes or no, but it does say, it does remind uh, anyone reading this of the certification. You have to make a bunch of certifications um, when you file an application for a PPP loan. And one of them is that you have to certify that the current economic uncertainty makes your loan request necessary to support your ongoing operations. So you have to make this certification in good faith. And here's what was new. They say you should make the certification taking into account your current business activity and your current ability to access other sources of liquidity sufficient to support your ongoing operations in a manner that is not significantly detrimental to your business. And then they gave this example. For example, it is unlikely a public company with substantial market value and access to capital markets will be able to make the required certification in good faith. Um, so that's when they then said you have until May excuse me, May 7 to return the money. Um, we got another question, kind of a follow-up to that was, do businesses owned by private companies <laughs> with adequate sources of liquidity to support the business's ongoing operations, do they qualify? And the answer was, just look back at the, the other FAQ. So I guess, you know, I'm gonna take that to mean, um, no, they do not. So now we're kind of in the private equity, but here's the question. Most of my company, most of the clients that I work with, we work with mostly online businesses here at my firm, coaches, consultants, and course creators. Most of them are not owned by large companies. They're not large public companies. They're not owned by private <laughs> equity. They're not, um, you know, they're not owned by anybody except the owners. Um, you know, even the largest clients that we work with um, who make millions of dollars in revenue every year, but a lot of them don't have a ton of money in the bank or they don't have very easy access to capital. They don't have a private banker who's calling them, offering to help them out. Um, so this is kind of an open question. Here's something else that did come out though is the new FAQ, um, and this was released, um, I think end of last week. Um, the new question is, will SBA review individual PPP loan files? And the answer is yes. So, and they remind you, you have to certify in good faith that you really need this loan. And it says to further ensure that PPP loans are limited to eligible, bar eligible borrowers in need, SBA has decided that it will review all loans in excess of $2 million. Now, most of my clients, if we're talking about 2.5 times um, one month of payroll, 
that loan is not going to be $2 million. It maybe is 50 or 100 or even a couple hundred thousand, but most of my clients are nowhere near 2 million. If you are filing for a PPP loan in excess of 2 million, just be aware, you're definitely going to be reviewed. Um, but they're also going to review other loans as appropriate. So I don't know if they're gonna do a random sample. I don't know if they are going to just look for red flags that look like fraud. Um, we'll see, we just don't know this yet. Um, but so here's the tricky question. And that is, what counts as an adequate source of liquidity? Does that mean that you have two months of cash in the bank? I mean, most small businesses don't even have that. But if you do have that, that doesn't last you very long. If your business has been totally derailed or you've, you know, you've been shut down, you've had massive cuts to your revenues, two months is not going to get you through this recession. Um, does that mean you have a year of operating expenses in the bank? Does that mean you have a private banker you can call or that you've got a credit line that's open for some large amount? That is what is not clear to me. Um, I did look, I found um, some analysis from a large law firm. I love large law firm blogs. I feel like no one reads them but me, <laughs> but other lawyers, uh, but they're very helpful and I appreciate their analysis. So this came from law firm Hush Blackwell, which has an office here in Chattanooga, but is a, you know, is a very large law firm with um, offices all over the United States. So here's their analysis. They, um, they said that borrowers that had access to liquidity to support operations should first determine whether such access would have been significantly detrimental to the business. So that means if you had access to liquidity, that means maybe you could take out a loan or you could access a credit line, but would that be significantly detrimental to your business? Because a regular credit line, you have to pay that back. And it doesn't really help you to take a huge chunk out of your credit line if next month when you have to start making payments, you can't make those payments. So I think that's the kind of analysis that we're gonna to need to look at here is even if you have access to liquidity that is not like money in the bank, but is access to credit, you know, would using that credit be detrimental to your business? Is there no way you can pay that back with your current revenue stream? Um, and then the, the Hush Blackwell also recommended that you should compile all documents, correspondence, research, and notes that you relied upon in coming to such a conclusion. So it sounds like they're kind of recommending that you have like a due diligence file that you, you know, do all of your analysis, if you're running spreadsheets or if you're doing calculations or research, that you kind of bundle it up and so you're ready for an audit. Um, there have already been arrests for fraud in the PPP program, so you may have seen this. Um, I think it was in Rhode Island. Um, it was two guys who had applied for loans uh, for a number of restaurants, and um, there were a lot of red flags for this one, so I don't think this is going to be the norm, but in that case, the defendants claimed that they had dozens of employees earning wages at four different entities, when in fact there were no employees working for any of the businesses, and that's very easy to double check. So if you're saying you have 10 employees on payroll, you're going to be paying taxes to the state and federal governments on those employees. So it's very easy to check and see, you know, were there, do they actually have anyone on payroll? Um, that's very easy to check. So beware, that's a bad idea to lie about that. Um, and in one instance, they applied for a loan for a restaurant they did not own. <laughs> So that again is also easy to check when uh, either the bank, I don't know if the bank alerted the feds because the banks are the ones processing this, um, but there was, uh, there's a newspaper article, there's lots of articles about this because the indictment has been made public. Um, but apparently there was some tapes with undercover officers who were posing as bank, uh, bank officers. So this is not your average case. Um, and I think that their loans totaled half a million dollars. So it was a lot of money. Um, but so here's my take, you know, end of the end of the day, only you can decide if you really need a PPP loan. Um, I feel I feel confident I took one out for my law firm because we have seen a dip in potential client inquiries and that will play out over the next few months that will affect our revenues for the year. Um, and we don't have a giant credit line uh, with unlimited access to funds if we need them. Um, so I felt pretty good making that certification. You have to make your own decision on that. But from a practical perspective, I don't think that small loans like mine, like most of my clients, are going to frankly get a lot of scrutiny because there's just not going to be the bandwidth at, to, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of these loans. They're not going to be able to come through each one with a fine tooth comb. Um, so again, I want you to do the right thing. I always want people to be on the right side of the law. Um, but as a, you know, 
I always like to be really practical also. So I, I think that they are probably going to be focusing on large loan amounts and obvious examples of fraud, like the one I just talked about. Um, if you have questions on this though, and you wanna talk through, um, you know, here's my financials, here's what I've got in the bank, here's what I've got on a credit line, or here's, you know, a loan I could get, uh, but I don't feel great about it. And you want to make sure, you know, would accessing that liquidity be detrimental to my business? Is this loan really necessary? Um, you know, we've got a week. I'm available. <laughs> feel free to contact us at the link below. awbfirm.com slash COVID-19 is where all of our resources live. Um, you, should, you can also DM me on Facebook or Instagram. I hang out in both places. Hope this was helpful. Hope you guys have a great weekend. And if you have applied for your PPP loan, I hope your money is deposited soon. See you later.